Welcome back to the channel. As you probably noticed, we thought we'd try something a little different. As you know, we do read and take note of your fantastically interesting comments, several of which mentioned that you don't like the stock videos that we've used in the past whilst illustrating our tales. Well, as always, we've listened and we're going to change the format a little and instead of lots of stock footage, you're going to have to put up with my face just a little bit more as I tell you another intriguing story of yet another fascinating character in the history of organised crime. Since its origins, the world of the Mafia has relegated women to a precise role. Faithful companions and mothers who raise children according to the values of the clan. Today, things have changed a bit and female figures have acquired a certain power within the criminal groups. Educated women, bosses and capable administrators. The actions of contemporary mafiosi reflect today's times where female emancipation is increasingly present. In the post-World War II period, the female roles were more silent and deferential to men in general, but there have been many figures who have been an exception to this rule. Pupeta Maresca is a striking example. A simple woman in love, Pupeta found herself involved in the complicated mafia world of those times where there was no clear-cut boundary between justice and crime. She made choices and took opportunities, becoming, for everyone, the first lady of the Camorra in Italy. Pupetta's real name is Assunta Maresca. She was born in 1935 in Castellamari di Stabia, a town in the province of Naples. Her family is not a regular one and she spends her childhood surrounded by crime and violence. Her father is Alberto Maresca, a well-known and extremely dangerous smuggler. Pupetta is also the granddaughter of another boss and famous assassin, Vincenzo Maresca. Throughout her childhood and youth, the girl shows her aggressive and determined character. She received her first complaint when she was still at school, the cause being an aggression against the classmate. The complaint is later withdrawn. Assunta was a very beautiful and charming young woman, and thanks to her looks and talent, she became well known in show business. After winning a beauty contest at around 18 years of age, she fell in love with Pasquale Simonetti, and those feelings were reciprocated. The man was known as Pascalone Enola and was a famous boss in the area. Her family had nothing to say, and the marriage between the two was celebrated on April 27, 1955. Pupetta was already pregnant by the time of the wedding. Pupetta enjoyed a fabulous day of her incredible wedding with 300 guests and several important people present. After the ceremony, celebrated in an ancient church not far from Castellamare, the participants move to the hills of Pozzano to continue with the banquet. The day ends festively, but the shadow of tragedy is already present. One of the best men of the wedding of the two spouses is in fact Antonio Esposito, called Totono e Pomigliano, future instigator of the murder of Simonetti. Pascaloni had earned his fame thanks to the local fruit and vegetable market, which he'd managed to monopolise in a short time. And this probably didn't please Esposito, who, a few months after the wedding, sent one of his men to assassinate Pascaloni. Before dying, he told his wife the name of the murderer. Pupetta is now a widow who was on the verge of giving birth, but a condition does not stop her desire for revenge. First, she turns to the authorities to accuse Esposito of the murder, but gets no results because she has no evidence. And after some time, she decides to kill Esposito herself. An interesting decision, a lady clearly made of steel. However, she doesn't do it alone, but has three accomplices. She was obviously moved by her desire for revenge, and her co-conspirators probably by the desire to eliminate a dangerous competitor. Pupetta is arrested shortly afterwards. Her crime sits perfectly within the context of the power wars raging amongst the Camorra. When interrogated, the woman will tell the judge these words. Your Honour, I am exhausted. I cannot fight anymore. I killed Esposito out of love for my husband. Because he had him murdered. If Pascaloni came back to life, if he killed my husband again, I could not act differently. Maresca ends up in jail and is sentenced to 13 years and four months. She gives birth to her son, Pasqualino, in the Poggio Reale prison. While Pupetta serves her sentence, her son, Pasqualino, is raised by his grandmother. Lady Camorra, as the media started calling her, is lucky, however, because she's granted a pardon, and in 1965, 
she's released from jail. A new phase of the woman's life opens up. Maresca has the opportunity to enter the world of cinema. She plays the role of the main character in the film Delito a Posilipo that had a plot clearly inspired by her life. During the film, she also sings a song written by herself, O Bene Mio. In addition to the cinema, she dedicates herself to more traditional business and opens a couple of clothing stores. The future of the woman and her family looks bright and far from the world of crime. But once again, a love affair brings her back, deep back into the dangerous realities of the mafia. In the words of Al Pacino in Carlito's Where, Way, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. She falls in love with a drug and arms dealer, Umberto Amaturo. From the relationship with him, two twins are born. Unfortunately, violence and blood once again become part of the life of Pupeta, who as a mother then suffers the tremendous loss of seeing her own son die. Pasqualino is in fact victim of a mafia murder and disappears in 1974. He didn't get along with Amaturo and had threatened to kill him several times. The Camorista then becomes the first suspect of the murder, but gets off for lack of evidence. The episode ruins the relationship between the two partners, and Umberto and Pupeta break up. Lady Camora becomes, in time, an important and recognised figure. She returns to the limelight with her statements against the head of the new organised Camora, Raffaele Cutolo. The latter basically offered bribes that Pupeta did not accept. For this reason, the woman openly declares not to be afraid of the boss. She clearly has and has shown the world she is not afraid of Camorra bosses. Pupeta ends up back in jail again for the murder of a man linked to Cutolo. This was Aldo Semerare, the psychiatrist and criminologist who had declared the head of the NCO insane in an attempt to improve his odds of getting a lighter sentence. Despite the request for life imprisonment, Pupeta manages to escape conviction due to lack of evidence. In 1982, the Italian media decided to produce a television series inspired by the life of the woman. Many years later, the story of Maresca is known by all thanks to a fictional production of 2006 starring the famous actress Manuela Alcuri, a very beautiful and famous Italian actress. And so, unlike many of her compatriots, Pupeta eventually grew old and died at the magnificent age of 86 years in her homeland, Castellamari di Stabia. What a story of adventure, guts and sheer will that allowed a young woman to challenge and prevail over not just one, but two Kimura bosses. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you're a new viewer of our videos, why not subscribe as we have loads more interesting stories like this coming up soon. And of course, please keep those comments coming. We do read and appreciate them. Until next time. Ciao.